Hello everybody, it's Paul here. I um, want to take some time again and to, uh, you know, bring a, a uh, something from my heart. <sighs> it's been on my heart uh, the last few days. It's been on my heart for a little while, but, uh, you know, after after I shared that, I did the, the series on the mark of the beast in the United States, Man, my, I had to take a break. It was a lot of studying. Uh, it took me two hours to put that together, but it was just so wonderful and glorious to be able to, God, to reveal these things and to see it and understand it and, and be able to, to see where we're at spiritually through the Word of God. Um, it, it helps me, even though, yeah, I, as, as an American and, and what I'm feeling right now, I could say a lot. There's a lot of things, and maybe I'll I'll, I'll comment on some things through this sermon. But I, I told myself I didn't want to make this a political video. Um, I want to stick with the word because um, you know that's that's what I'm called to do, and I want to I want to make sure it stays that way. So um, God will take care of the rest. I believe that. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm not happy with what's been going on because it's it had dramatic effect on my life and. Uh, you know, I was able to pay my mortgage this month. None of my building payments got paid this month. Um, you know, it's just been a rough, rough, uh, <laughs> a rough time. So, um, and I appreciate all the kindness from all of my gym members who've told me, Paul, hey, just keep charging us in April. And I still didn't charge because, you know, when I say something, I, I stick to it. And I made a decision and I wanted to do that. And, uh, and having faith and trusting that, you know, this thing will quickly get back open. So, that being said, I don't like I said I don't want to. I'm not going to focus on that too much. This because I have a lot of emotions that could come out and uh, over the way this was handled, what's going on, what I see behind the scenes. But again, understanding God's word and knowing that God has to fulfill His, his word, His word is going to be fulfilled. And, and I talked about that um, through the Mark of the Beast sermon and how the United States is going to play with play in the very end. How you're going to be forced, your rights are going to get taken away in the end. You can't buy or sell in the end. All these things, and you've we've all got a taste of it. This was a test run. This was a taste test run, and look how quick they went and did what they did, and they took away rights. And 22 Amer 22 million Americans are out of work. Um, I was listening to Dr. Phil a little bit the other day, talking about different things and the effect it's having on people's mental health. He talked about in Texas, there's a, a food. Um, bank that there was 10,000 people in line and the people that were in line used to work at the food bank now they're at the food bank in line trying to get food it's just it's just devastated and really what it has caused is the greatest the, the greater pandemic that's going on right now is fear it's a, the effect it's had on our minds the effect it's had on people mentally the depression I, I seen her the other day. The suicide hotline has just skyrocketed. People calling, people you know talking about you know because the mental what how it mentally is affecting their lives. So we got a real problem right now, and that's what I want to address today. I want to bring God's word to address what the enemy has done, what the enemy is doing. And the enemy is not going to stop, guys. We have to understand there's always going to be that enemy. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We have hope in God's word. I put together some Bible verses. Um, the title of this message that I want to bring is um, basically um, what is the, uh, the true pandemic now. And it's how to overcome that, which is fear and the oppression that it's, that people are under. Before this even happened, people are people are already, anxiety is already a massive uh, uh, d disease and issue mentally in our society. Trust me, I've battled it before in my throughout my journey at times. I have my own journey. I've been through some horrible struggles in my life and tough times and ups and downs. But going through those things for me has allowed me to learn so much to be able to help others and to be able to speak from compassion from my own personal story um, and but not only has there already been 
the enemy working. But now look at the level. It's at a high. It's at a heightened level than it's ever been. So I hope that it can bring um, some some encouragement. And uh, so I'm going to. I want to read something here. Give me just a second. Let me. I'm going to grab a piece of paper I had. And again, the real, I'm calling this the real <clears throat> pandemic um, is fear. And that's ultimately what the enemy was, was trying to accomplish uh, in this whole plan, is to, to get people under fear, because fear is a great motivator. And, it, and, and look, how, look how, I mean, look how the government uh, that fast took over everybody's lives. <laughs> Yeah, that quick. And they could sense and they could tell that, let's get this back a little bit, that, um, let's see here, first thing. They could definitely could sense and could tell, I think, that it was, it's building. And it's building, it's about to become a real major, major issue. So now all of a sudden, it's just funny how the, oh, the numbers are, the curves dropping, blah, blah, blah. And we're, 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 we're going to reopen America again. Interesting. How do you shut down an economy and then I'll turn it right back on? But we'll, we'll, you know, we'll see how that goes. Okay. But uh, nonetheless, it doesn't matter what what what's going on around us. It, it's it's God's word, and we can we can focus on Him um, through these times. So I want to read. Okay. Now, when Jesus. Um, was was getting before during the time of the birth of Christ, there was a king called Herod, okay. And Herod put out a decree. But I tell you what, before I go talking, I mean, just read. I want to read these verses. So just listen for a few minutes with me. Um, Luke chapter two, verse one and seven. Okay. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea and into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the, the days were accomplished that they should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. So at this time, you know, Herod puts out a decree that, that the whole world has to be taxed. It's a world, this is a worldwide See the whole world here. The whole world is going to be a, there's something that's that's being done to address the whole world. Okay? But everybody needs to go back to their homes, their cities for this taxing, okay? Okay, just keep that in your mind there. Now, Matthew chapter 2 uh starting at verse 1. Just bear with me here. Uh, now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, and saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen a star in the east and are come to worship him. Where, when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, and he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, he inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, 
And when you have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king that they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over them, over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Praise God. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their tre treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frank frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt. And thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed to Egypt, and, and was there until the death of, of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth, and set forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and on all the coast thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Thus then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Ramah there was a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted because they are not. But when Herod was dead, he had behold, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in, in, in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel, for, there, for they are dead, which sought the young child's life. So, God's word, had a, God had a plan, and it was going to be the birth of Jesus Christ, which is our, is our Lord, our Savior. But at the very same time, the government at that time began to call it word, as it says here, that there be a king rise out of, the king, out, out, out of Israel, which is obviously our, the, our king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus Christ. And to combat against that, First of all, there was a, as, as we read in Luke, there was the whole, all the whole world was, there would be a tax over the whole world. Everybody had to go back to their homes, back to their cities for this taxing, okay? But also, they put out a decree that every child that was two years or younger would be, was to be killed. So there was a weeping. Thing. Can you imagine what was going on at that time through the whole world? Can you imagine at that very time Mothers, who, their little babies being ripped out of their arms and being just murdered and killed. Because Satan, the enemy, through Herod, because Herod was a, it goes back to fear, was afraid of something that God was getting ready to do and then began to try to do something to combat it. To put the people, the, the whole world under a oppression and a fear to control the people to try to, to hopefully destroy this, this promising King, Savior, our Lord and Jesus Christ. But God, hallelujah, God protected. He protected His, his promised Son. He, he, he warned the, 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 the wise men, get out of here. Don't go back to Herod, because then he's going to ask you where the baby's at, and then he's going to go right to the, to the baby Jesus and kill him. Don't you dare go. The Holy Spirit warns, and, warns them in a dream. God uses dreams, folks. He uses dreams to deal with people. He's given me dreams my whole life to show me things, reveal things to me, warn me of things, and show me how to handle situations. And every time, it's never failed. God speaks through dreams. God speaks through visions. God speaks through, through obviously, through His Word. But God had warned them. And then He warned Joseph, take your, you know, take the baby, do this, do that. God looks over His children no matter what's going on right now in our world, whatever it is that we want to try to reason and, and, and we analyze, and I know from my last message, the mark of the beast in the United States of America, that God's word has to be fulfilled. That there is going to be a tribulation period. That there is going to be a one world government. That there's going to be a, that, that time you can't buy or sell without the mark of the beast. And we talked about that. Go listen to that sermon if you want to find out more of what we talked about. But you're, you're, you're Antichrist. 
is the Pope. And you know what's you know what else just happened recently? For the first time, he is he went ahead and renounced, separated the self the titles as the Vicar of Christ, which I don't I don't I don't agree with it anyways. That's that's blasphemy anyways. You put yourself instead of God, but he's but but what it is showing is is he's now trying to show the Catholic Church that hey, listen, I'm not even in that position. I am above it now. I answer. I am above. I answer to myself and to give. And you go read it. It's it's right there in the Catholic uh, yearbook. The Catholics are upset. The priests are upset that this guy's making himself to be like a tyrant. But that's all to fulfill, fulfill Scripture. So we know, as we look at this right here, and we know the whole world this time was being affected by a decree by a Herod the king. And, and there were millions and millions of babies killed and lives lost during that time. There was a, such a fear upon the upon the, the world in general but God still provided a way hallelujah God kept his hands on the life of Jesus and that baby grew up and became our savior and and he is the word so God is still has his word preserved through all this that's going on right now the, around us how all of us are being affected how, how I know how hard I've been affected by this but I still have his word they can't take away that from us. They can never take that from us. Amen. Our faith is our victory. It's our strength. It's our, it's, it gives us victory over the enemy. It puts the enemy to flight. Praise God for his word. Amen. Now, fear. Let's get into this. Okay. Fear causes mental oppression leading to depression and anxiety, okay? The enemy works in fear, okay? Let me tell you something. There, 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 is, there, is, there is different dimensions, okay? There's that, there's, there, you've got the third dimension, the fourth dimension, TV waves, things like that. The devil works in a dimension that you can't see, okay? He's a spirit just like God is a spirit, and he works on your mind, he uses other people to affect your mind. He uses the government to affect your mind. He'll use things through the through media. He'll use things through, through uh, like I said, people. That sometimes the people closest to you, the devil will come right through to affect your mind. Your mind is like a receiving station. Constantly, information is coming at you all the time. And what what you feed upon the most is what you become. I remember hearing a preacher tell a story one time of an Indian, and me being part Cherokee, I, I love Indian stuff, um, and he was, uh, he just became a Christian, and they asked the chief, they said, chief, how you doing since you became a Christian? He's like, ah, pretty good, pretty bad. Well, <laughs> why is that, chief? He said, there's two dogs in me all the time. There's a white dog and a black dog, and they're always battling. And they're like, well, chief, which one wins the battle? He said, oh, which one chief feeds the most, you know? So whatever we feed the most is what wins the battle in our minds, okay? If you think that alcohol, smoking weed, drugs, gluttony, whatever it is that's going to fix your battle, the devil's lying to you. It's a lie. And I know that sometimes we, as humans we can become so beat down and weak by the enemy that in our weakness that the enemy slips in and we grab a hold of an, addi an addiction or that addiction grabs a hold of you. But Jesus Christ come to set you free. He's our answer. Amen. L fill your mind. Start filling your mind with his word. And his word, because it ain't you, it's his word grows inside you. And it takes over you. And it fills you. And it equips you. And it anoints you. And it gives you victory. And it gives you strength and it gives you faith. Because that's what His Word does. Amen. Hallelujah. But I tell you something. If you stop, if you, if you get your focus away from the Word, and you start feeding more and more on the things of the world, and what the, what's going on on social, on the media, and Facebook, and on all this other stuff, what the news is telling you every day, and what, and what people, maybe you, got, maybe you got some friends that you need to get rid of. You ever thought about that? The Bible says, be not deceived. Bad company corrupts good manners. 
Choose your friends wisely. Choose the people that you let around you. Put people around you that are going to put positive energy in your life. They're going to speak faith over your life. They're going to encourage you and build you up and help you get through what you're going through. Anybody's, anybody's ever been around a narcissistic person? Oh, it's destructive. If you got a narcissistic person, you're in a relationship, any, get away from it quickly. Flee to the rock. Flee to Christ. Flee to His Word. Because let me tell you something, guys. You're, you are precious. <laughs> you are precious to Him. God, His love for you is so mighty and so great. But let me tell you something. God is like a little dove. You ever watch a little, the dove is the most gentle little bird. It has no gall. And it'll fly. It'll just quickly fly away. God will sometimes sit there and wait. He's just waiting for that moment where you'll finally look to Him. And you'll look up and you'll say, God, I need you. He's right there. Ever, the Bible said, ever-present help in the time of trouble. But if you keep looking to, to other things outside of you, if they're not good for you, then get it out of your life. Cut it away from your life. You know, when I opened these gyms six years ago, that was my vision. And I've kicked people out of there, and I'll keep kicking people out of there. Anybody that comes in there and brings a spirit that's, that is negativity, that begins to destroy the atmosphere of what God has given me, I, I won't allow it. And people who know that, because I am, I am, I am the, the doorkeeper of the, of, 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 the, of the fold. Because I know what God has put in my heart. That we want to be, we want to be able to, to go to a place. For me personally, I want to be around people that are, that are being positive. And that's important for you too. So put yourself in the right atmosphere. Put yourself under the atmosphere of His presence and listening to His word. Okay? Amen. Now I'm going to continue on. I didn't want to get off talking about my gym, but, you know, it, it ties in for a moment. And uh, those things for me, I'll tell you something, they're never easy. I never enjoyed having to do that in the past. But when you have something come in, it's like a cancer. And it starts to eat away from the, the atmosphere of what you built. Then it has to go. There's no there's no if, and, if ands, ors, or buts. It goes. Because it's God's. Amen. Now, let's go back. Mental oppression and what it does to you. If you stay under it too long, and, and I know right now, guys, that we, we the, worldwide this has been going on. We're going back to what they, the, the days of Jesus and what they were feeling, what they were going through. God understands. God knows. Amen? So mental oppression um, can cause a lot of things. can affect your um, sleep. can affect your stomach. Um, it it gets, begins to create anxiety and so forth in your mind. Um, it, it can just do a lot of things to you. But basically what it comes down to is the devil is lying to you. He's a liar. But fear is such a strong motivator, right? Oh crap, there's a virus hitting the country. What? back in March the unknown right the government took it as a moment because there's a worldwide agenda going on to fulfill scripture and it was used as a ploy as a tactic on the minds of the people period period but the real problem now is, is, is the mind the effect that it's had on the minds of the people and that's why I just pray that God will continue to encourage and, and, and get, help people mentally get through this and, get, and begin to, because once people, the thing is now is, is you're going to start, as people start going back to work and stuff, there's going to be an anxiety about that, folks, because this, this, this is what this has put on people, okay? And it bothers me because we live through H, we've lived through other Flus. We've lived through H1N1. We've lived through SARS. There's different things. Swine flu. You name it. But never was it used as a as a as a something in their hands to to, to strike such fear in people's minds, to take away the ability to make a living, to shut the country down, to st tell people to stay home. I've seen videos of people going on a bus and getting ripped off buses because they don't have a mask on. 
just just total people being arrested for things. You can't get together more than 10 people. I mean, this whole thing. But it was a test run. You remember that. Just remember what I preached the last message. Go back and listen to it. At the very end, you won't be able to buy or sell. Think how this felt. Okay? This, think about how this felt. How people have been made to feel during this time. Our, the rights, the constitutional rights, justified saying, well, you know, we got to make sure this hashtag stay home and save lives and all this stuff. Go listen to some of the Dr. Phil stuff, too. I mean, I'm telling you something right now. I'm not just some crazy guy over here talking over here. It is all over. Doc, there's there's well-renowned doctors blasting this all over the place, how this was handled. Blasting it. But it has created a bigger problem, and that's that's anxiety and fear. So let's continue on here. Um, the result of anxiety, which is a false feeling... That feels real, but it's a lie. Now, myself as one who has who has experienced um, anxiety in my life and understands what it's what it's like, and, and now the anxiety of going through this, it's a lie to you, folks. It's a, it's a lying. Satan uses it, anxiety to to affect your 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 mindset, to affect how you feel to get you depressed, to get you down, to get you confused, to get you lethargic, to get you wanted to give up, to get you not wanted to, to try anymore. Just, it, just, it's, it's, it creates hopelessness. Now the symptoms of anxiety, hypervigilance, irritability, or restlessness, lack of concentration, racing thoughts, unwanted thoughts, fatigue, sweating, excessive worry, fear, feelings of impending doom, insomnia, nausea, palpitations, or trembling. And anybody who's, who's battling anxiety right now, it's no fun. I don't care who you are. It's, it's terrible. It's horrible. This past Monday, let's see, it was Monday, right? You know, my daughter, you know, has also been out of work during this time. And she's been having tremendous anxiety. And, you know, in, 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 in a lot of ways, it's, it's allowed, you know, me and her to, uh, to get closer. And uh, I don't want to get emotional here, but, you know, I love her so much. And, uh, and, and 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 to see, you know, it, God can take something that's negative and use it as a positive. But uh, you know, to see how it's affected her, to see uh, I see myself, uh, the other people that I know, you know, to see how it's affected th their lives. Um, you know, Monday night we both it's almost like we're twins. Like sometimes I guess, but you know, she, I I was my mind was racing Monday night. It was just like I it was just. Not the unknown, like sitting or sitting here with not able to pay your mortgage, not able to pay your building payments, not able to pay, pay your business insurance, um, you know, sitting here uh, wondering what's going to happen next. What am I going to do? My mind was just running Monday night, running. It, I, I think I had like two hours of sleep, three hours or something. And she texted me that morning having the same thing, you know, just and I know that there are there are, then there are millions right now, millions I know we all live in little small towns right now, but I tell you something, man, this stuff is serious. It's everywhere. People's anxiety, and that's just 22 million in our country. It's worldwide. What's going on right now? And it's affecting people. I come down here yesterday, and I was putting together an another sermon that I'm working on. And I'm not gonna lie to you. You know, I'm a I'm a strong, grown man. I'm, <laughs> you know. A lot of, but I sat here and I and I just cried, and I and I cried to God and I said, God, please, you know, I got to make a living, you know. I was basically told, when this hit, you know, and uh, you know, I had to shut down. And I, when it when it first happened, 
for me, I thought, well, wait a minute here. I'm, we're a very small little rural area. Our, our, we never have 10 people at one time in a gym, unless it's a class, and we, we, right away we canceled our classes. So I was trying to, to make quick adjustments because people were got, get, texting me, asking me, worried, are we, is the gym going to close? Is the gym going to close? And I said, guys, you know, the, I don't feel like we fall underneath that. We're not Planet Fitnesses. We're not Snap Fitness. We're not Anytime Fitness. We're not the Y. We're not these bigger chain gyms that come out in towns of 7,000, 12,000, 20,000, 30,000. We got towns of 1,800 people and 2,200 people. We're okay, guys. You know, we may have four or five people at the most at one time in our gym. So, we're gonna we're gonna continue to stay open. Well, then I uh, one of the small towns. I'm not gonna mention who which town it was. People close to me know exactly what happened. It was called by the police and told basically I have shut down. I asked the officer. So, well, let me ask you, what happens to uh, a business? I didn't say mine, but a business that decides not to listen to what you're asking. He said, well, they'll be arrested and prosecuted. I thought to myself, well, I don't want to be take that chance of being in that business, so I'm going to go ahead and conform and, and, and listen. But I sat there, my mind in limbo. Think, why? Like, what? This is crazy, you know? And being told that I can't make a living. I can't. And then I made a decision. I couldn't charge my members in April. It just didn't fit right with me. So I put so all, this whole thing put me in a, in a hard, hard situation where I've had to battle, you know, anxiety. What am I going to do? What's going to happen next? A lot of people didn't lose their jobs. A lot of people are still working, you know. And uh, but you know what's funny too is I know a lot of people in the medical field. You know, one of my closest friends who I personal train, I love her deeply, uh, has been in the medical field her whole life. You know, a couple weeks ago said, Paul, I'm, a, I'm. I have to go get unemployment, you know, and it's just been horrible, you know. So there is a tremendous anxiety that people are going through right now, and it's real. And uh, and, and I and I and I I'm living it. I'm battling it myself, and I'm and I'm turning to God, and I'm and I'm and I, when I bring these messages, I'm I'm also speaking, preaching back to my own self. To be to reminding my own self where to keep my focus during this time, because the, as the Bible says, it's His promise. Psalms 23: The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. Amen. So, I know that there's finally got decreed yesterday that May 1st, Ohio is going to start opening back up the economy, and you know, and uh, we're going to reach out to 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 our local people and, and began to set up opening the gym back up and that's great you know that that's that's but to see what how this was handled and the effect it's had on people is it's been tremendous and uh, and, I, and I feel like that there's going to be still a great sense of fear going forward because people all people are going to be paranoid I mean the country puts they put such a fear on people's minds of what uh, this Dr. Fauci uh, on March 26 wrote a letter to the New England Journal of Medicine stating, you can go Google it, look it up, look up New England Journal of Medicine, March 26, 2020, that this, this corona, COVID-19, 